That rocks. Dude. That's awesome. Peak plate. Uh, standing? You already did standing, yeah. I think. I did it right. back there. Yeah, you're right. You can see how chilled out we are on course the fire these days. <laughs> we don't even keep score. So this is the Tresna Defense Jag 9. I just finished with that tabletop review and I like that gun. I almost love the gun. Really. If I mean if it was a 800 MSRP, maybe 900 MSRP, I would love it. It's just kind of expensive. And I I don't know why why these 9mm PCCs and AR platforms are so expensive. They just are. Uh, not my company. I don't price them. I just review them. Uh, kind of like the one we're going to talk about right now. And it is a direct competitor to the excellent Tresna Defense Jag 9. Let's say hello to the Stag Arms 9T. The 9T! This is also an excellent platform. Excellent. Now, in the Jag 9 review, I told you guys that after I finished with another PCC review, I went out saying, well... How has the industry answered the PCC demand? Is there one specifically in an AR platform that myself, me, would be interested in, that I would spend my money on? And that's what these tabletop reviews, which will post very close to each other, are about. I have a chunk of change. I want a 9mm AR platform. What do I buy? These are the two guns I would consider right here. The Jag 9 is competing directly against, against the Stag Arms 9T both excellent but this is really kind of a Colt AR-15 chambered in 9mm that's just my way of thinking that's how I look at it the Jag is kind of a more innovative design it uses Glock magazines it's lighter it's kind of a hybrid between a Glock and an AR and I love it I like that it's innovative good on them and it is much lighter than the Stag for instance Let's weigh this thing. And wh what do you think it weighs? So we've got a TRS-25, the same sight that's on that Jag-9. We've got a steel, what is this, like a 33 or 32 round Colt style mag. It's got that 13 and a half inch diamond head VRS rail, flat bottomed rail, which takes their proprietary rail sections, I guess. It's threaded, so you can put accessories on it. I like the shape of it. I don't like how heavy it is. What do you think it's going to weigh? Well, and you know, I don't want to slam this because the weight, because sometimes the weight is good. And we were when we were running and gunning with this, we did like eat lead to 2.0. 2 oh, eight, eight pounds, three ounces. That's a stout weight for a nine millimeter. Yeah, that's that's heavy. I mean, that's heavier than a lot of AR-15s. But like I said, when we're running and gunning with it, that weight settled it down and made it easy to make the shots. You know, you may make an argument, well, transitioning from this target to that target, I have a slower swing. Eh, I guess. I think that's very minimal. I like that I was able to hold it further forward on the handguard. I actually like the shape of the handguard. Like I said, I find it somewhat slick. It didn't provide me a lot of traction. It's just way too heavy. And, and although I like the extra length there, that's what she said, I know. It, it's, you know, it's just, it's too much. I'd much rather have a nine and a half inch rail. SBR that sucker. Now we're talking with the Stag Arms 9T. Now, now we're talking. Uh, the let's look at the barrel shape, and it's very M4ish. Can you see it under there? Nice ventilation on the diamond head. 
By the way, you can see it ventilates quite well. There you go. So it's a good barrel profile, very similar to that one, the Jag 9. M4 makes all the sense in the world with an application like this. It's a direct blowback. Like I said, with the Jag review, of course, you're not going to see any tap off points for a gas system because you don't need it in this gun. A2 birdcage. 4140 steel, 1 in 10, button rifled, chrome lined barrel, by the way, with the stag arms. 16 inch length barrel, just like the Jag 9 from Tresna Defense. From what I know, stag arms builds some really good ARs. And I think it's evident in this gun, the quality is there. I don't look at anything at this gun, with this gun and go, ah, that's cheesy. I don't. It's very well made. 33 inches overall length, that's kind of long for a PCC. Remember, our competition is kind of like the Keltec Sub 2K, if it ran good. <laughs> uh, I'm talking, well, it runs great, but sighting issues, I mentioned it in the other videos. Anyways, it's kind of a bigger gun, the Stag Arms 9T. And I asked myself, what is it really for? I mean, it's really too big, too heavy to be, in my mind, a defensive PCC. It, it just is. I mean, I could think of a lot better options that I, I myself would, would use, kind of like the CZ Scorpion Evo. You know, that's super lightweight, well not super, about seven pounds, seven and a half pounds, 30 round mags, you know, you SBR it, super accurate, reliable. To me, that's a great defensive PCC choice. Hides well, carries well, once into action, it means business. So does the 9T, the problem is, that first part, getting it into action. I mean, it's gonna be the same length as a regular AR-15, just as heavy, heavier than a lot of other ones. I would think you'd be better served by going with an AR-15 or a tactical carbine or whatever one you want. Uh, I would love to see him offer a different handguard, different barrel length for SBR paperwork holders. Just me though. And then another thing if we talk about the weight is the magazine. I mentioned this in the JAG review. Uh, good firepower. It, it was totally reliable. We had no malfunctions at all in the gun, if memory serves. I think it does. But this this magazine is heavy, dudes. It's, it's just too heavy. The days when we have to have steel magazines to have reliability are long past. They just are. Let's see what this weighs. So basically, freaking 8 ounces for the mag. Okay? Versus the Jag 9 using the Glock 33 rounders. What do you think? Well, it's going to be a lot less, I'll tell you that, about half the weight. Called it four and a half ounces. So, you know, you load up what, you know, be like a freaking British uh, paratrooper in World War II. Bridge too far with your Sten gun. You know, having 12 of these loaded up, that's a lot of weight, dudes. And then we talked about the magazine well in the other vid, but let's talk about it here. There's a lot of metal here in the receiver. I think they can mill it out vertically or horizontally. To get rid of some of the weight so just drill some holes here would it look goofy probably but you could plug it put some polymer plugs in there i'd like to see it at least you don't have any block blocking plates or spacers in this magazine well like you did with the colt versions so it's a purpose-built you know 9mm ar lower and that's cool i like that got a shell deflector here cool the trigger on the stag 9 was unimpressive it's just a rack grade, I'm seeing if I have my trigger scale, a rack grade AR-15 trigger. I would replace it. Yeah, I would. I, I We didn't like it. When we're testing it, we're just like, ah. It's not like totally horrible, but it's close. Here's the trigger scale. Let's see what it pulls at. Yeah, 513. It's not like horrendous, but I, I, I would do some work on it. Standard A2 pistol grip, easy enough to, to swap out. They do that to save money. Although at a price point that we're talking, you know, 1200 MSRP, I would like to see something more, wouldn't you? I would. You can swap that out, swap the trigger out. Takes a lot of AR-15 accessories. Not the innards, of course, because it's a blowback operated gun. Double sling plate there on the buffer tube. We saw that on the Jag 9 too. And this is kind of low end. Just running a regular AR-15 buttstock. You know, in the Jag-9, which actually MSRPs for lower, we get this, which I like better. 
the Rogers Super Stock. And you could put whatever you want on there. But the, what we're talking about is value. So if I have to go out and have to buy extra components, then you're putting $50, $80, you know, $150, $200 extra into your, you know, your PCC. And now your real cost is, what, $1,800? That's the point here. So, but this is fine. I can run both these. I mean, I'm not an elitist with that stuff. It's cool. Didn't run the irons. These are also diamond head. What do they call these suckers? It's those freaking diamond head trapezoidal sights. And I don't like the trapezoidal sight picture. And I don't travel in competitive circles, but I, I wonder if they really ever caught on. I just like circle and circle. That's, that's it. I've tried them. I've shot them. Like the Detroit DOAs, I've shot those a lot, and they're the same ones. I'm just like, nah. See these lock? They do lock, so that's cool. And they're included. That's where some of your cost goes. With a longer handguard, you get a longer sight radius, so that's good. Field strip on the 9T will be just like the Jag. Super, super simple. These guns are simple. They're just 9mm blowback guns. There's your bolt standard charging handle. I forgot to say in the JAG-9 review, and I kind of wished I had, I might experiment with something like a PRI Gas Buster to divert some of the blowback, which isn't a lot, but it is. there is something there that since there's no gas system, it all kind of just kind of comes back a little bit. Like I said, it's minor, but it's just a consideration. There's a look inside. Simple, upper and lower receiver fit. Perfect. No movement whatsoever. Uh, so the main thing, I guess, criticism-wise, that I would say on this gun is the weight and the overall length. Unless you're just running it in competitions or you want that weight. Like I said, in actual running gun, we, we kind of liked it. It was cool. I guess I should put that up here so they go with that. Accuracy-wise, though, I have a couple good things to show you. PFI dude shot this group, dude. Look at that. With a 9T. It is more accurate than the Jag 9 from what we saw. That group, maybe not so much. That group, not so much. That actually was about on par. But remember, we're shooting unmagnified off a polymer uh, table in the desert. There was no wind that day, but it's, it's kind of a challenging shot, no magnification. And then I shot this out of the Stag 9T. Suck it! Oh, baby. I think that is uh, Golden Saber JHP. I could be wrong though. Another awesome group. And this is not made up. I mean, dudes. Yeah, dudes. All these are like sub MOA out of the Stag 9T. Uh, TRS 25 red dot on a riser mount. Good medium value red dot sight, three MOA. Highly recommended, re reviewed like in 1979 here. But I the, the accuracy is Excellent. I was kind of messing around with you on that first target because uh, we didn't, we really didn't know. We're like, uh oh. And so if I'm having a bad day or if another crew member's having a bad day, we just swap shooters and maybe we can represent the weapon system better. That's the goal. So when I bring it to table, I was like, this is what the gun's capable of doing. Eliminate some of the human factors, which you can never totally eliminate, but you might be able to minimize them. Okay. Accessories. I would dump this handguard and sell it on eBay. Well, wherever, they, if they let you sell on eBay, freaking political correctness there. Uh, yeah, dump it. I would SBR it. I would lop the freaking barrel off. I put a nine inch, nine and a half inch handguard just like this Odin works on it. Do the paperwork. That would lose a lot of weight. It would make it cool as heck. <laughs> Caught myself. Cool as heck. It would be so fun to run that way. And it would have that second kind of cool submachine gun uh, thing that guys like me included I think it's just cool you can say, th say say the same thing exactly with the Jag 9 and I did I would still prefer this one over because it primarily uses this accuracy though this wins uh, accessories yeah get a bunch of mags and the compatibility uh, I didn't really look it up I mean which mags work with it I'd probably just buy them direct from stag you know their mags will work with it the cost is probably going to be a little bit up there compared to the Glock mags of the Tresna Defense Jag 9. Don't know what to tell you. It is what it is. Uh, you could run the irons. They do work. I told you my preferences on that. It really doesn't need anything but a handguard, maybe a barrel job, and maybe pitch this. This this works. The standard uh, you know, AR-15 buttstock, but it, I don't totally dig it. 
of value options. I'm going to go super quick on this. This will be a super short video. It's going to bracket the Jag 9. There are a lot of similarities. M1 carbine, SIG MPX, CZ Scorpion Evo 3S1, high point 995, just right carbine. Oh, yeah. Tresna Jag 9, Keltec Sub 2000 Gen 1. Gen 2 has some serious sighting issues with a spinning front sight block that is not keyed to the barrel. We cannot believe that. And no, I didn't take it off to the prior to the review. I feel stupid. When I found that out, I was like, how did they not key this to the barrel? Spinning around held by one tiny Allen screw. Then it has windage problems, so the front post is wandering left and right. Uh, and then the handguard on the sub 2K. Gen 2, not the Gen 1. The Gen 1s are squared away. That's why I said don't sell them in that video. Uh, it, it, it bounces around too. You can't lock it down. So they have sighting issues. Not reliability, not accuracy issues. And then I think in time those will be corrected. If they were, I would probably still go with the kel Sub 2K. If it were corrected. If not, uh, right up the list. And you're going to have to watch our pistol caliber carbine shootout. We have a very interesting discussion. PFI dude myself. Uh, this would be very high on the list right here. CZ Scorpion. It's just so excellent. SBR it, you know, pay the $200. So fun, accurate, and it's really harkening back to that MP5 love that so many of us have. But in an AR-15 platform where you want to train with the AR, you're used to the battery of arms, and all these have last shot hold open. I forgot to tell you that, both the Jag-9 and the 9T, so you can train, you know, slap the side of the receiver for reloads, all that stuff you're used to, good on you. Worth the money, I mean, it's gonna MSRP at uh, 1275. <sighs> the Stag Arms 9T, oh wow, that's a hard hard thing to answer. Uh, I, I, I'll leave that up to you, I don't know. It shoots very accurately. It did have, by the way, a very uh, pronounced recoil impulse compared to the Jag 9, and that is very subjective with us shooting it. So we shoot the 9T and it's kind of a springy, ka-chink, ka-chink, ka-chink. We go to the Jag 9, and it still had that. I mean, it has a spring in the buffer tube, but it was less pronounced. It was more, I guess, smooth. Uh, still a great gun, though. Really great. If it weighed six pounds and, you know, MSRP'd at 900, I would be raving about it and have a super high likability scale. That's it. See ya. That's what I was hoping you'd say. I know. You want to run it again. Totally do. It was it was my favorite so far, but I've yet to run the stag, so. Oh, you'll love the stag, dude. The accuracy on the stag was pretty awesome. What I told you though, and I told these guys in tabletop before, is the weight doing like this stuff is great. Yep. In competitions, and this is really kind of set up for I don't know what stag set this up for, but right. this heavy forend on it, and this is heavy. This is a lot of metal. And a heavy barrel. It really settles the gun down. Sometimes in competition, that's what you want. Right. You know, but if you're doing quick transitions, you know, maybe you want a certain balance, but you get a super light gun, they're hard to shoot accurately.